thank you for having me here this morning, and it is a pleasure to be here with everyone. I know it's a month that can be one of the most hectic of the year, and I definitely appreciate that you've all taken the time. I'm here to tell share about a skill that I believe is absolutely crucial to living a better quality life, and it's something so simple that it can often be overlooked or forgotten about, and that is silence. It's become a very rare delight in today's world of constant sounds, interruptions, alerts, and the ongoing busyness that accompanies modern life. Did you know that on average, comparing today to 25 years ago, people are consuming around 100,000 more words every day and that's outside of your work life. The brain is working on overload for most of us seven days a week with information coming at us from the moment we roll over and grab our smartphone, to the moment that we fall asleep. It's partly accepting that boredom is a part of human existence and some of our absolute best ideas come from that moment that we allow our brain to slow down and soak in the silence. Has anyone here ever come up with a genius idea in the middle of the night or during a massage or in the shower? I know it's definitely places I've come up with some of what I believe are my most brilliant thoughts and it's all moments we allow our brains to just simply slow down. The last four years, as I've studied more and learned more about meditation and mindfulness, I've been amazed at the very subtle differences, both subtle and profound actually, that it's made in my own life. And I love hearing feedback from all of the clients that I work with and the ways that it starts to shift and transform their lives just from something so simple as slowing down and enjoying silent moments. Now everyone understands the need that we need to exercise to stay healthy, we need to brush our teeth daily to prevent tooth decay, sleep enough at night. But one of the big pieces I've found is missing for many is the time to slow the brain down and allow it that rest and relaxation. Mindfulness, which I like to define as the ability to keep one's mind in the present moment and engaged in what you're doing right now. A meditation which is a tool to teach the brain how to embrace stillness and silence. That's not the ideal silence we're looking for. <laughs> and I've definitely been seeing an upward trend in both individuals and corporations more interested in learning about the benefits of simply slowing down. Some of the research, which I think is wonderful news, is it's never too late to learn. The brain is extremely adaptable and it doesn't matter at what point you begin, the most important part is just beginning. A lot of the tools and techniques that I teach and I use personally range from one to five minutes a day. So it's not, not a huge time commitment, but just taking the time to slow yourself down will begin to affect the brain. I've definitely noticed this. One of the first benefits I felt was the ability to fall asleep at night and learn how to just turn the brain off, stop the train of thinking. So I view the benefits of many moments of silence as a necessary way to stabilize my nervous system. Just as I might get a massage for muscle relaxation every month or two, but I'll try and stretch daily to extend the benefits out, or going for a full dental cleaning, but then brushing my teeth every day. It's the same with meditation, where there's times where you want to have a longer session, but it's those little mini moments of touching up and taking those one or two or three minutes every day that really help with mental hygiene. Now a little bit about me as mentioned, I own the company Modern and Mindful. I also own an Airbnb management business. I have two young children, married, try to maintain friendships, eat healthy, clean my house, and all the balance that we all try to achieve. So focus is something that the ability to learn how to sit in silence has helped me learn to focus my priorities and keep my own sanity while juggling all the many demands of modern life. I actually can't imagine functioning properly without the mindset of taking the time to fully breathe. The silence, both in actual, the sound of silence and silence of the mind are both really important to our well-being, allowing our brains time to rest, getting away from that never-ending scroll that we all are familiar with on the phone, designed to keep our brains hooked on all the latest information, getting dopamine after dopamine hit from the number of likes, the number of shares, the newest news story, and recognizing the fact that the scroll is designed to hook us. Have you ever found yourself going to check one site on your phone, maybe Instagram, maybe the news, and then you're wondering where 20 minutes of your life just went? 
Your brain was trying to keep up to your finger scrolling the device. And while it might have been physically quiet around you, the mental chatter was anything but silent. Think back to whether you remember what the last five pieces of content that you read were actually about and whether they were genuinely relevant to your life, personal growth, career development, or feeling connected to yourself and others. It can be quite an interesting test if you've been mindlessly reading and then stop and think, wait a second, what, what have I actually recalled from all this information? It is rather shocking when many of us realize that we could an hour spent reading through posts, we have trouble recalling what we just read, what we looked at. I know I found when I used to read books on my phone, I could finish the book and then think, oh no, who is the author? I can't remember what it was. But when I have it in my hands, it's a lot easier to recall. So some of you may meditate occasionally in here, some regularly. Any hands for those that have any? Excellent. That's fairly typical for many rooms I work with. There's usually one or two. So the primary goal of my company is to begin to encourage people to simply begin a practice. A lot of private clients that I work with, I teach them to start with one minute a day. And I sometimes get some crazy looks, like one minute, that's, that's nothing. Of course I can do one minute. And so we're going to start right now. We're just going to sit in silence for the next one minute. You can feel free to either close your eyes, gaze at the floor, or leave them open, whatever's comfortable. Just sit with no guidance. Just sit for a minute, and we're going to see how this sits. Now, what did you notice in the silence? Were you aware of how you were breathing? Was it through the nose, through the mouth? Was it slow or fast? Did you notice any bodily sensations? How the feet feel, how the hands feel? Did time seem to move really slow for that minute? Or did it feel like it flew by? It's amazing how long a minute can actually feel when we haven't trained our brains to sit down and actually embrace the stillness and silence that it can occur in one quick minute. And this is the reason I love to say start with a minute and do that for a week, then go to two minutes. But I have many people that I speak to that say, I tried 30 minutes, it was impossible, and I'm never doing this again. <laughs> <laughs> so did you find that thoughts began to roll into the mind? The second you slowed down, things like, did I send this email off this morning? Have I bought milk for the weekend? Are my Christmas presents all done? Have I ordered the turkey? It's amazing how many quick thoughts can actually roll into the mind the second you try to slow yourself down. And the mind naturally wants to think. We actually process thousands of thoughts every day, around 60 to 80,000, which is a rather phenomenal number when you think of how many, all, all those little thoughts and how they all add up. And our brain rebels against us when we do try to slow down. As well, it's taking away the culture of busy. Does anyone else find that whenever you ask someone today, how are you, the default answer is busy? And it's a, it's a question or an answer that is worth pondering. Busy, yes, everybody, I don't know a single person who's not busy in some way, but why is that the default answer? And does it have to be that every waking moment is spent being busy? If you just think about how much your day is spent in noise from traffic to talking to others, the hum of the workplace, scrolling through the news, listening to podcasts or music. We'll have a few facts now to share about the benefits of meditation and the benefits of silence. As the growing body of studies coming out, it's fascinating that this is being scientifically proven that it really is good for you. 
Silence releases tension in the body and stress. A study, and one of the ones referenced back in 2006, but there's been dozens since, showed that just even two minutes of silence actually relaxes the body, changes the blood pressure and blood circulation within the brain, more so than even listening to relaxing music in that same two minutes. It replenishes your mental resources. The demands of modern life place a significant burden on the prefrontal cortex of the brain, the part that's involved in your high-level decision-making, all the problem-solving, basically what allows you to focus day-to-day. -day. So just think about how much you can enhance your own focus by slowing down a couple minutes a day. And being quiet can regenerate brain cells. A recent study done on mice in 2013 involved comparing the effects of ambient noise and silence on the brains. And it was found that two hours of silence daily, quite a bit, but again, this can, can be achieved over time, led to the development of new cells in the hippocampus, a key brain region that's associated with memory, with learning, and with emotion. So the research does continue to grow. I try to share some of it on my own site just to help pe keep people up to date because it, it's, it's very interesting what is coming out. And just thinking, when's the last time that you took space and whether that's first thing in the morning in your car, transitioning from work to home or home to work, to just be in complete internal and external silence. And I'm going to tell you a story about the incredible power of silence in my own life. At one point, I was a chronically fast speaker, like really fast, especially when nervous or excited. And if I count the number of times that I had the feedback that I needed to slow down, well, I would have lost track of that a very long time ago. I would leave voicemails and always get calls back that would go, something happened to my machine. It was really garbled. I didn't quite catch that. Clearly, the wires were crossed. <laughs> okay, there's clearly a message for me here because not everyone has garbled phone lines in the city. <laughs> so I did, I tried for years to attempt to learn how to slow down. And as I began to meditate in small doses, it helped a little bit, but not completely. Where anytime I got excited or just too many ideas coming, it would just, a ramble would come out. <laughs> Get the blank stare back. Of, what, are you, what are you talking about? <laughs> and then one day, I didn't have this specific intention that I was just, this was going to suddenly help and move speech forward. But I went into a flotation pod for an hour long meditation and was able to get into an extremely deep state and laid there in this pod completely devoid of any sound, of any stimulation, just laying there. My brain had had enough training with the shorter meditations. I was able to get into a, the, probably one of the deepest meditative states to that point. And I came out feeling really disoriented, really discombobulated, not quite sure what was going on. And went home, went to bed. The next day I went to work. And right away some coworkers go, something's different. You're speaking differently. And my, uh, my manager in the meeting that next day said, you've slowed down. What just happened to you? <laughs> I said, this might sound crazy, but <laughs> a one hour meditation sw switched something. And I fully believe that it was the ability to be in complete silence and lack of stimulation for that hour that my brain, the subconscious and conscious, they were able to come together and build out that desire to finally learn how to slow down and not ramble away. It, I can't even recall the word count now, but it was quite extensive when I was tested as a child. So this has stayed. I, I meditate on a regular basis. Some days it's five minutes, some days it's 10 minutes, some days it's two, some days it's 30. But I really believe that allowing the brain just a, a chance to be silent and to reflect and be in the moment has really, really helped with this. The ability to just start slow. My first meditation, I did try a 30 minute and came out and thought, what? This is not easy. And it's something I'd sort of viewed as this hippie practice out there that I didn't really need. But the more I've, I've come to learn about it over the last four years and the more clients I've begun to work with and the stories that come out. I had one woman who worked with us for a year who we could see the changes in her subtly. But when I met her daughter a year later, when she came, she said, I, I need whatever my mother has because this has been life changing in our house. So it is really powerful and beautiful to see what can happen. I want to bring us back to some silence here with a technique that I use in my teachings. Our first moment, there was no 
I didn't give you anything to do. We were just sitting in silence. But now I'd like to try a technique that really has helped a lot. And we're going to be silent for another minute here, but with some guidance. We're going to inhale through the nose and exhale through the mouth to the count of four. So it's, how many here would say you breathe through your nose versus your mouth on a day-to-day -day basis? Excellent. Mouth breathing is not healthy for us. <laughs> There's actually more oxygen released into your brain and body when you're breathing through your nose because you actually have to breathe in slower than through the mouth. And that is also helping to replenish and calm the nervous system. So for the next minute, I want you to breathe in through your nose for four and breathe out through your nose for four. And just bring your awareness to how the air feels as it comes into your nose noticing that it feels cool, noticing the warm air as it comes out, and just being aware of the rise and fall of the belly. And we're going to start for a minute right now. Taking one more deep breath before opening your eyes and coming back to the room. Did anyone find that easier when you're focusing on your counting for a minute to go by versus just sitting there without anything to focus on? The act of counting is a really effective technique to help bring that stillness and silence because it's, it's really difficult, if not impossible, for your brain to be thinking about your to-do lists or your day when you're focused on just counting in and out. And it's something that's great. I'll set a timer for three minutes sometimes if I'm in between meetings in the car and just focus on the counting. A nice life hack as well to, when you're beginning, take 10 fingers if you want 10 deep breaths and put them on your lap and then just bring each finger in each breath. And then there's no distracting yourself with which breath you're on. Now also and very important for me is apart from silencing your brain no matter where you're at, is the ability to be in places that are truly silent. And nature is the best place that I know of to find that true and pure silence. Whether it's carving out time to walk in the forest or alongside a river or in a grassy field, I personally try to get out to the mountains as much as I can because I love it out there. And I find that one of the most relaxing spaces. But there's also a great number of incredible natural spaces right within the city in all quadrants of, of Calgary. And being in nature is a great way that I find it allows my body to experience all five senses at the same time and really taking in that silence of nature. Another favorite experience of mine is going into the rat's nest cave in Canmore where I have led many meditations inside the cave in a space called the Grand Gallery. Just imagine sitting in a natural space it's in complete and pure darkness and only brought to light by several dozen candles. And it creates an incredibly cozy feeling. It's a space that naturally brings the desire for silence as it's several hundred feet below the surface of the earth. And the only sounds you hear when you're in the cave are the rise and fall of your own breath and the soft dripping of water droplets at a little pond, underground oasis in the distance. The meditation comes after a 45 minute hike up a mountain where the group then convenes where we get our, all our caving and safety gear on for the initial scramble up to the entrance. Now it's worth noting that the ability to breathe through fear can really come into play in this experience as well. For some it's claustrophobia and for some it's fear of the dark. For me it's the one part in a wall that has a ball of hundreds of daddy long legs balled together <laughs> in this giant wall of spiders. 
and knowing how to use your breath to get past whichever fear happens to be plaguing you at that moment. Each time, I know the spiders are there, <laughs> breathe my way through it and know that they don't go any deeper into the cave. And knowing what's ahead makes it all absolutely worthwhile. It's the opportunity to sit in complete stillness, breathing in the both damp and earthy air, surrounded by candlelight and becoming fully immersed in the bodily sensations and the breath and experience that completely revitalizes me and makes me feel incredibly happy to be alive to experience something like this. When we set up for the meditation, it's one where everybody helps to light the cave up. We pass out tea lights and everyone places them all around. And it's truly one of the most magical places. It's pretty rare, if even sometimes in the forest, you can hear the highway in the distance, but this is one of those few places where there is truly no external noise creeping in. So the entire experience is awash with mindful awareness because at points you're crawling on your hands and knees, you have a little headlight and that's, that's it. So you're lying on your sense of touch and sight to what you can see within the dark. You have to really focus on senses. I find hiking up the slope, there's parts where you have to grab onto the rope or crawling down a ladder. One little point, you have to crawl through a box that was built with a little ladder 30 years ago. And it's, for me, it's been one of the spaces where it really brought to mind how powerful true silence and complete mindful experience and awareness can be. And so I've, I've done this probably about eight or nine times in the last year and a half. But it also, the lessons have flowed back into life to, to aim to find those bits of silence and stillness. And remembering how beautiful it really does feel when I'm there. And a fun fact about nature, you know that 17 minutes in nature can reduce your cortisol, so your stress levels in the body by up to 12%. And the numbers just keep growing the longer you spend in nature. So it's, it's pretty powerful. I remember reading a study a couple of years ago where they had two control groups that for affecting mood and testing moods. They had one group go into a shopping mall for an hour a day, one go into the forest for an hour a day. The first group was feeling worse about themselves after the two weeks. <laughs> sort of unfortunate placement there to be in that group versus the nature group. So this is the point, the ceiling is about 60 feet or so high, it's just one of those incredible spaces, so close to home as well. Also, this is another one of my favorite spaces in my management company. I manage a cabin out in Bread Creek where I hold silence retreats and just getting out there to be amongst the trees, the forest, in a beautiful classic Canadian setting is also pretty beautiful. A last tip around starting the day mindfully. And this is something that I began doing about a year ago and I try to do it every day. It takes maybe three minutes a morning. When the alarm goes off in the morning, or if you're one of those lucky wake up without the alarm, <laughs> Then I would just before you get out of bed, do not grab the phone, do not get go, do not get going, but just laying on your back, open with five deep breaths, and then take your mind to think about three things that you're grateful for. For some, this comes really easily. For some, they struggle at first, but it comes more naturally after a little while. And then just simply smile, and then get out of bed and start your day. Two, three minutes a day, but it's, it's a very subtle difference that it can start to make after weeks and months of doing this. Silence is something very beautiful that I think everyone needs more of in their life. And finding ways to carve it out, it's the silence that allows us to then live the rest of our lives more fully. So the goal of meditation isn't to see if you can sit as still as a statue for 10 minutes or 20 minutes. The goal is to take what happens in that silence and stillness and bring it into the rest of your life and enhance the quality of your relationships, the enjoyment of what you do day to day, what you do on the weekends, and allowing yourself to reprioritize and actually spend your life doing and feeling as you want to. So I'd invite everyone to take a deep breath. And I thank you all for being present and coming out this morning on this snowy winter yet beautiful morning. <laughs>